Hey everybody, Bailey Hancock here. Welcome back to the Bailey Hancock Show. We have one of my favorite people on today. I'm super excited, Lauren McGoodwin. She is the CEO and founder of Career Contessa. If you're not familiar with Career Contessa, go to the website right now because if you <laughs> give a shit about your career at all, uh, you need to know about it because it is the home of so many amazing resources and content and just vast knowledge on how to navigate your career in a way that feels good, which so much of that is about what this podcast is about. So, so excited to have Lauren on today. Uh, Career Contessa, it helps over 1 million women every year navigate their career. So I can't wait to dig into both Lauren's past and then also all of the great advice that I'm sure she has for people that are both just trying to figure out how to be happier in their job and then also how to keep moving forward and find a new job maybe. So welcome to the party, Lauren. Yeah, thanks for having me. So happy to have you. So your background was in recruiting prior to Career Contessa. So I want to know, you know, did you go to college for that? Did you always know you wanted to be a recruiter? How did you end up there? And, and what was that phase one of your career like? Yeah, so I definitely did not know. If I had known I wanted to be a recruiter, it would have been a lot more simple getting there. Um, so I actually went to college. I had plans to become an elementary school teacher. I was like Aww. second, third grade. Those are my people. I wanted to be a third grade teacher for like a minute. And my <laughs> first grade teacher, I'm still friends with her on Facebook. And I ran it by her and she was like, you don't want to be a third grade teacher. You want to play with the office supplies. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, you're totally right. I don't want to yeah. be a teacher. I just want to create the classroom. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, I wish I'd gotten that memo. I definitely was like second, third grade. I thought that for years, no one was like, hello, that's probably not a good fit for you. I, it wasn't until I started working in the classroom, I had to make lesson plans. And uh, so remember, you actually went all the way in. Yeah. So I was like, I was in the education school at university of Oregon. I was totally in it, in it to win it. I was going to do it. And then something just like, I don't know, clicked to me where I, somewhere around junior, I decided I don't think that's going to make me happy. Um, I always joke that it was probably like a J crew catalog where they showed off all these beautiful business clothes. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I realized I was never going to get to do that, but um, I hope I wasn't that superficial, but I might've been. Um, hey, sometimes it takes something as small as that to be like, wait, but I want to be able to wear those. Yeah. Clothes. I was like, wait a minute. I'm never going to be this cool business lady. So after that I decided, I was like, what am I going to do next? I started like joining every club there was in school. I decided I wanted to go into marketing. Long story short, I wasn't going to graduate in time. So I took the path of trying to get a lot of experience over changing my major. Um, had a bunch of unpaid internships, but some really cool internships working in events, marketing, sports marketing, that kind of thing. Um, still graduated with no job and didn't know what I wanted to do. And I like to say that I was the career center's poster child. I did every mock mm -hmm. interview, career fair, workshop. I mean, they, to this day, I'm actually going to speak at an event in March for University of Oregon because that's how well they knew me at the career center. Um, like they still talk about me, they said. So <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if that's a good thing. But anyway, um, I, I just like, I was shocked that I sort of like had done all the, like all the right things and checked all the right boxes and still had no idea what I was doing. So um I'll kind of make this a, a long story a little bit shorter. I ended up getting a job working in admissions for a university here in LA. Uh, my boyfriend now husband at the time's job was moving to him to LA. And honestly, 2009 was not the best year to be looking for a job. So moving to a bigger job mar market outside of Portland, Oregon was, was helpful. Um, so I started working for this admissions department. I was so bored. I, I like, <laughs> <laughs> like, a monkey from the circus could have done my job. I answered phones. I filed paper. I did whatever people needed me to do. I spent one day, I spent like hours feeding paper into the printer. It was just like one of those things where I was like, what am I doing with my life? This is absolutely miserable. I had a two hour commute, yada, yada, yada. It was Ugh, on top um, of everything. That's just enough. Yeah, to, no. It was bad. I was <laughs> like, if I didn't go to lunch at noon, at like 12, 10, someone would be like, are you going to lunch today? And I'm like, of course I'm going to lunch today. You know, oh, so Wait, my like, first, my first thought about an undergrad, I was finished with my daily duties in 45 minutes. Yes. And my boss yes. literally said to me, I went to him cause I was what, 22 and I was so yeah. excited and ready to take on the world. And I said, Hey, you know, I'd love to take on some more responsibilities. I'm, I'm kind of getting a little bit bored. And he's like, Oh, we, have you played the games on your computer? There's like a bunch of games. On <laughs> oh there. my God. And I was so like, good. Are you, are you being, and he was serious. And I was like, Oh, so I did get really good at all the different versions of solitaire. Yeah. You're like solitaire. I can do solitaire, yeah. all of them. <laughs> also, I want to remind everybody, this was like before there were good computer games. So oh, no, there was a real was good computer. Good, game. Yeah. Solitaire yeah. was the game. 
Um, you know what's interesting? I was done with work. So we started at 8.30. I was always done by like 9.15 on the dot. And then I would wait for the phone to ring. And that's actually where I started to learn about blogging. And like, I would read blog, like, thank God for Cupcakes and Cashmere. Like that was the first blog I started reading. And I mean, from there I found others, but like that, that took up a good couple hours of my day. And then I would basically, I used to keep a sticky note over the clock because I didn't want to know oh. how slow time. How long did you last at that job? Over two years. It's no! So sad. Yeah. It's oh so sad. God. It was I mean, miserable. Six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I like I wanted to quit from the day I got there. Um, I had no shame either. I was like applying to jobs while I was there. So, um, like at least you use your time wisely. I learned a lot about astrology during those six months. <laughs> trust me. So I was so funny because I also so because I was at a university, you could enroll in a master's program and they would pay for your tuition. So oh, I was like, I I should do this. I was actually studying for the GRE on my desk. Like the, the, my teacher would, or my teacher, my boss would walk by all the time and I would be doing like math problems. Like she did not care. It was terrible, but I was, I was like some, I was like somewhat productive, but anyway, um, I was pretty bored, pretty miserable, which led me to this whole, you know, quarter life crisis of what am I doing with my life? And like, the sad thing was I was so ambitious. I just had zero direction yeah. and I, um, randomly got an assignment. This was like a year and a half in, or maybe even two years in, I think I was there for like two and a half years. I randomly got an assignment to do some recruiting. And what universities do is they recruit junior college students, or at least this was my job was recruiting junior college students to come to the university. So it wasn't like recruiting the way you and I think of companies and recruiting necessarily, but it was the best thing I'd ever done in my entire life. Like I had so much fun talking to people and kind of like thinking, helping them with their career paths, which I do think that's sort of the natural teacher in me is that mm -hmm. I wanted to help people with that. So I remember telling my parents like, wow, I had like this, the best day ever. I got to do this thing, like a little bit of recruitment. And they were like, have you ever considered being a recruiter? My jaw almost hit, I swear it hit the ground because I was like, what are you talking about? Recruiting is a career. Like I, I was just like stunned that I could have literally been talking to recruiters all through college and this and that and never considered it as a career. So how did you miss that being like the poster child for the career center? They I never talked about recruiters. No. And like I was in oh. these interviews with recruiters and it never occurred to me like that that's a job. That, that's a job. And like, I should pursue right. that or like university recruiting. Like that's what they were doing, which is ultimately what I went into, which is really interesting because this is such a sign of like, it can be right in front of you and you still don't see it, you know? Um, so when I decided that I really wanted to pursue recruiting as a career, I reached out to about probably like 70 to 80 people on LinkedIn who were recruiters in LA. About 30 of them got back to me and I had informational interviews with every single one. I would take them in my car or in the bathroom or wherever I could. Like I, I did everything and I would take notes. And basically from there, I learned like what it is to be a recruiter, what type of skills, what type of work environment I wanted to work in and like specifically what type of recruiting because there's a lot of different types of recruiting. Mm. Um, so I really was able, one, I was on cloud nine, just knowing what I wanted to do. And then two, I was able to narrow my search down and I ended up getting a job working in university recruiting at Hulu. And I like, I'm so thankful to this day for that job because it was the best job I've ever had in my life. I loved it. It was such a good fit. And my confidence grew a lot while I was there because I was one, I was really good at my job too. I was really happy in my job and it's really amazing how those things can really um, intersect and yeah. have effects on your life. And um, so Career Contessa, actually that master's program I had been enrolled in, I was about, I basically only had to write my thesis and when I went over to Hulu. So I stuck with it um, even though I had to pay for the last two credits, but I stuck with it. And my thesis was on millennial women and career resources, because at mm -hmm. that point I had gone through this like very traumatic, like job search experience, figuring out what I wanted to do and successfully come out the other end. And now I was at Hulu and I was on the other side of the hiring table. So I was listening to hiring managers. I was work like reviewing resumes. Like I was going to say like, it was my job. It was my job. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Um, and I, so I wrote my thesis on millennial women and career resources and, um, the university is that actually gave me some funds to create the very first prototype of career contessa. Oh, wow. um, the undergrad students have to come to your focus groups as a grad student <laughs> because they get like, I don't know, extra credit for something. So I got to have all these focus groups with real people, had a really positive experience. So I originally started career contessa just to finish school. Then I kept it because 
I thought I was going to leverage it into a product management job later on. And Mm -hmm. one of the developers I was traveling with was like, you know, if you want to go into product management, it would be really great to have a website. So Hmm. first it was for school. Then it was like to leverage into something else. So I worked at Hulu, um, for almost three years. And I would say like a year and a half of that, I was running career Contessa on the side. Um, really not knowing what I'm doing in in hindsight, but, um, yeah, that's sort of the story of, you know, going from having no idea what I wanted to do recruiting, which then ultimately led me to pursuing career Contessa full-time. It's so funny. Two things that you said. First, the idea that there could be a job that is your dream job that you just don't even know is a job. That same thing happened to me with event management. I went to undergrad originally for journalism because I wanted to work in magazines and Mm -hmm. took one. Didn't we all? (laughs) Yeah, right? I think that was like every girl's dream. Every Um, girl wanted to work in a magazine in New York City. Right. And then like Ugly Betty, I was like, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I just, I got into it. I took my first reporting class and it's the only class I've ever gotten a C in in undergrad and I hated every second of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no. And I was being very dramatic, like laying on the floor of my apartment sophomore year, just like sobbing, being like, this is my life now. I've <laughs> made a terrible mistake, but I have to yeah. stick with it because I'm already yeah. two years in, which is absurd also. By yeah. Way. Yeah. And I, at the same time was in student government and I was running um, the off-campus housing department. And every semester I would throw an off-campus housing fair, which was just like an expo for all the apartments in Gainesville. Mm-hmm. And I loved every second of it. And I remember going into the career center because I too was a freak, regular frequenter. <laughs> yes. um, they were like, hey, Bailey, you're still fine. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Like life is not. Like, oh, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. um, and I remember saying, I just wish I could throw events for a living. And they're like, oh, there's a major for that. I'm like, why didn't anybody tell me? This? Yeah. I think the <laughs> problem is we're waiting for people to tell us these. Yeah. Things. That moral of the story already. Yeah. Don't wait for anybody to give you permission to pursue something that you're excited about. Cause yeah. just make it up. It was yeah. also a different time. That was seven, 10 years ago. Yeah. More than 10 now. And you didn't just make up jobs back then. Like you got yeah. a job now yeah. everybody makes up. I make up a new job title for myself like every other month. So right. Right. You know, and I mean now. like, I mean, jobs that exist now didn't exist back then. No, and jobs that exist now might not exist in five years. Who the hell knows? That's definitely going to happen for sure. That first point and then the confidence point I think is so crucial. And that's actually come up in a few of my conversations on the podcast is when you're down, everything seems to be down. And when you don't remember who you are and that you're more than just your job title or how much you're making, it's so easy to accept crap for work. And for relationships. Yeah. And usually with me, they go, relationships and job happiness go hand in hand. If oh, I'm yeah. happy in a relationship, I'm happy in my job and vice versa. Yeah. And yeah. then the same on that negative end. So confidence I is know. I'm trying really hard to, to not have the ups and downs of my self-worth coincide with the ups and downs of my career. Because – Good luck. It's, yeah, I know. It's so hard. I, I'm like, want, I really want them to be like living in separate worlds and they, and they won't. Um, but you know, I, I think, I think that's a tough one too, because you can't have your self-worth. Like my self-worth was so damaged because I was so embarrassed to tell people I work for an admissions department and I'm the admin. Cause it's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't like, hey, in the- I had an admin role at a hotel with an MBA making $15 an hour And I didn't know that I was an admin role. They called it a coordinator. Yeah. And I didn't know that was code for admin. And so in this coordinator role, I hated it. Same as you. I was like bored out of my mind answering phones. I was chained to a desk because if I wasn't there, I had to transfer the phone to somebody else. And it was like, okay. (laughs) Um, And it wasn't until on administrative assistance day, my coworkers gave me a $20 Starbucks gift card as a thank you for being a great administrative assistant. And I went home from work early that day sick because I literally could not stop crying. I was like, yeah. I'm a secretary with an MBA and I'm yeah. 28 years old. This is horrible. Yep. Oof. Been there, had that happen. That does not, it, I mean, Doesn't if nothing lights a fire under your butt though, then some of those moments for sure. Yep. Okay. So you end up in Hulu, you start Career Contessa. Mm-hmm. What happens next? So then ultimately I left Hulu, obviously, to, to start Career Contessa full time. And, and part of that was, you know, I loved, loved, loved my job at Hulu. So that was really, really hard. But I, I basically said, 
okay, a year from now, I need to leave Hulu, kind of like leave the nest sort of mentality where I was like, I know that this is scary and it goes against kind of the grain of who I am. I'm very risk adverse, but I felt really drawn to Career Contessa because I had had the time, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Then I had a hard time with the job search. Then I was in a, a company that while I loved it, I was sort of like struggling to figure out like, how do I ask for a promotion? Oh, mm-hmm. I just got passed up for that position. Oh, how do I advocate for myself? Oh, there's no female leaders here. Like, oh, mm-hmm. someone got pregnant. What's the maternity leave policy? Like I started realizing like there isn't a place for me to be able to go to feel like I can have conversations with like-minded women Mm. or not even like conversations, but get resources and actual help. So something that I, and again, maybe it comes from my teaching background, but like, I don't want to have a conversation. I want you to give me some actionable tips and tell me what has worked for you or give me a template or a worksheet or whatever it is. And so that's really to the core of Career Contessa is we are not just a media site. Like, of course we have some great content, but you will find a lot of very actionable, um, tools and resources that will, that have actually impacted people's lives and help, help them, you know, make it through a challenge. And so I was really drawn to career contest, I think for that reason, because it didn't exist. And I was like, you know what, if I don't make this, somebody else will, and then I will have regret about that. So I left and the first year of entrepreneurship was a bit of a roller coaster. I As they are. <laughs> really did not know what I didn't know, you know, so ignorance yeah. is definitely bliss with that. And the first year I definitely got my butt kicked. I kind of wasted time on some things I shouldn't have been doing. I went down a rabbit hole that didn't need to go down. Like it just took me a year to really find my bearings and understand like, what am I trying to build? What is it? And what's interesting is like, I thought I was really prepared before I left, you know, like I thought I was like, again, I like was all smug about it. I was like, I have my website and I'm an LLC <laughs> and that's like the easy stuff. Um, the hard stuff is the strategy, the, the business model, the, the resources, right? Like you, it takes manpower and tech power and all this stuff to build these things. So the first year was tough now. um, So career contest had just turned four. So basically I would say like the last two years have been like, I, I'm, I got it. I know what I'm doing. We have a team. So things are rolling, but it's still a lot of work. Um, So yeah. So I left career or left Hulu to launch this and like I said, in the last two years, we've really gotten some momentum and luckily people like it. And it's, it's a, it's always nice when you're the person who has an idea and you know, everyone's like, well, you need to validate your idea before you start it. Well, some ideas, it's really hard to validate them before you start them. So what's been nice is to see that this idea I had and this thing that I thought people like me would want or women like me would want actually do want it. And, and companies also want it. So that's been obviously that's, that's the goal and I'm happy it worked out that way, but I can't say that I was overly prepared for it to work out that way. Part of it's been luck um, and mostly hard work. Well, I think there's always a combination of those two things. Mm-hmm. It's, it's working your ass off, getting yourself in a place where you know what you're doing and people believe in you and they'll vouch for you. And then if you find yourself in a lucky scenario, mm-hmm. capitalizing on it and yeah. not letting it pass you by, knowing how to make the most of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and what I love about Career Contessa is there's so much information out there for people wanting to start their own business and Mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. And I think with Career Contessa, it's not focused on that. It's Mm -hmm. focused way more on the career person, the career woman who, you know, wants to stay in corporate America, whatever the hell that means anymore, but not be her own boss. And I value that so much because you know, I never meant to be an entrepreneur. This was kind of an accident. I was, I like forced myself into it by mistake. If that's possible. <laughs> but, uh, I, I've always valued being a member of a team and yeah. bringing your unique skills and talents to a group of people and then making something happen in a collaborative way. Yeah. But there's not a ton of information out there on how to navigate your career if you're not trying to go out on your own. So yeah. And the, and the advice that is out there is usually tailored to men in the workplace or it's really boring. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's like pulling teeth to kind of like get myself through this advice and read it. Um, the other thing that's out there a lot is job search sites, right? Like everybody's basically saying, if you're unhappy with where you're at, go find another job. That's the answer. So hard. That is not necessarily the answer. answer. You take yourself wherever you go. So whatever you are having here, you might have there unless you figure out how to communicate better, unless you learn how to manage up, unless you learn how to advocate on your behalf so you get paid what you deserve, unless you learn how to talk to that bully and tell them that it's not okay to 
you know, treat you like that in front of other colleagues or whatever it is that you're challenged. Like the bottom line is that we've made it so easy for people to apply to other jobs. Um, I always, we have a saying in recruiting where it's spray and pray. You spray your resume yeah. and pray that someone will pick it up. And they won't because they know when you're just jumping from place to place. And, and like, I actually think job hopping can be a great thing if you're doing it for the right reasons. But I think what's nice about career contest is that we're more than a job site. Of course you can search for a new job and apply and we will help you and you'll have the best resume, best LinkedIn, best answer to tell me about yourself, et cetera. Um, but we also are looking for companies that are female friendly, meaning they are committed to equal pay. They offer flexible work schedules. They have female leadership, right? They have continue investments in continuous learning, that kind of thing. So we are doing, we're basically curating all that boring stuff that you didn't want to deal with before, or all the things that you don't have time to go out and do. We're putting it all in one place. Um, but we are not advocating for you necessarily go out and start your own business. If that's what you want to do, fine. You can actually probably use a lot of the resources on Career Contessa. But I think what like a harmful message or irresponsible message that gets out there is that, hey, the workplace is not built for women. You got to start your own business and do it. That is not the answer for everybody. And no, it's not the answer for most people. Yeah. And look, if you want to make a big impact, go be Mary Barna of GM and, and have the ability to make you know, an impact on policies for maternity leaves that might impact the rest of the country. That's fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you can't have an impact as an entrepreneur. I just want people to understand that we glamorize entrepreneurship as like the end all be all. And I don't want anyone to feel like because they're not an entrepreneur, they're losing out in the game of life. By no means are you. Um, also as an entrepreneur, I was telling someone earlier today, like my maternity leave is me <laughs> with a baby yeah. still having to work, you know, like yeah. There are a lot of great things about, you know, quote unquote, corporate America that are fantastic for women. And if you are in a company that doesn't support that, then maybe the answer is you need to go find a company that is supportive of that and is the right fit. And um, I don't think there's enough conversation about company cultures and, and being able to figure out what's important to you and then find that. And, and so I could go no, on. A hundred percent. I'm so, I'm so on board with you there because to your point of being able to make a difference. Yeah, of course, if you're an entrepreneur, like you get to steer the ship, you are the ship, you are yeah. doing everything. You're, you're yeah. literally doing every role on the ship, which kind of does diminish your ability to make it a big impact for a lot of people. You're making a big impact for yourself. And you're yeah. right. I think women, it seems to me at least, and because I'm in a lot of women focused entrepreneurship groups and professional de development groups, it does appear as though women seem to be leaving corporate America in droves because they don't feel welcome there. It yeah. feels like it wasn't built for us, which, you know, I get that to some extent, but I don't plan to be an entrepreneur forever. I don't yeah. think so at least. I'm, it's yeah. certainly not out of the question. And a lot of that comes down to feeling like if you are in corporate America or the cor corporate world in any capacity, you do have the ability then to have your voice heard and to yeah. shape the conversation. And yeah, it's certainly yeah. not easy to be. It's like boss. an ambition burnout that we're experiencing. I think yeah. more than anything is like, we're so driven by what's next, what's next, what's next, that we're also exhausted by the what's next, what's next, what's next. And so, I mean, I also think that if you are, have that entrepreneurial spirit, you can absolutely work for a company with your entrepreneurial spirit. There are oh, a lot of companies 100%. out there that want people who like, want to be the entrepreneur, but want the resources of that company. They want your creativity. So yeah, I mean, again, I could go on this forever. <laughs> I won't go on this tangent forever, but I, I do think that, um, the ambition burnout is, is a real thing. And that's probably something we need to address more than, you know, some other things about corporate America. Totally. I'm completely and totally on board. So with Career Contessa, four years now, congrats, by the way. Thank you. Um, what are you seeing as the topic that people are most confused or curious about? Yeah. So we, I mean, we produce a lot of content. Yeah. <laughs> so and it is, by the way, if you have not been to the site, the reason I like it is because it's not a bunch of fluffy blog pieces. No. It's practical, applicable, downloadable, good yeah. shit that you can use right now to actually do something to improve your resume or your interview skills or your networking skills or anything under yeah. the sun as it relates to your career. Yeah. I always joke that, you know, people read the skim because the skim makes you smarter. And then it's like, shoot, we should have had that tagline. Like we will actually make you smarter too. <laughs> you yeah. <know>? Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's great that, you know, to be, you sometimes compared to that, but, um, 
the only place where we are really lighthearted is on Instagram. If you follow us on Instagram, you'll love it because we're funny and we're goofy. And no, it's great. You know, we make these office jokes that everyone can relate to because Instagram shouldn't be that serious. You know, right. but our site is serious. We, um, we really truly, like I said, have these actionable advice. We're not, we're not trying to make light of the fact that careers are tough and all that stuff. So some of the areas that we see a lot of interest, uh, money. So a lot of women thinking about what should, what am I worth? Like what, what should I be asking for when I go in for that negotiation? How do I negotiate? Okay. Now that I have money, how do I invest it? How do I budget it? How do I pay off debt? Um, I think a lot of women recognize that while money's not everything, money is certainly a source of power. It gives you the ability to make different choices. And yes. really at Career Contessa, we advocate for being able to do whatever we can. So you have the, enough, the most choices available. Um, so money is super popular. Job search content is always really popular just because look, the, the rules of applying for a job are all over the place, you know, like it's, it's tough to find a job. I mean, the average person, the average job search lasts like six to nine months or something. Oh, like that. So and, painful. Yeah. And you get so worn down during that time. Oh, I always joke. If you want to take yourself down a peg, like, take, you know, chop off your self-esteem a little bit, go out and try and search for a job. Like, oh, whoa, so that true. will take you down. So, um, job search, obviously a lot of questions around, um, well, LinkedIn is always really popular because LinkedIn is not the most user-friendly, um, tool, but LinkedIn is how 99% of recruiters, I think it's actually like 90, 87%, but like every recruiter I know when I was recruiting, we use LinkedIn every single day. Um, LinkedIn is how a job will literally fall in your lap. So I think people are really curious to know, like, what can I be doing to, more to, to take advantage of that tool. Um, especially because LinkedIn, when it started was known for being this kind of like old man, like, Dodgy, yeah. yeah, it wasn't like cool and hip. So I think a lot of us are sort of like, even like the very like smart, ambitious, like successful women are like, wait, is LinkedIn like, do I still have to do that? I'm not sure. You know, it's so funny to me how many people will come into one of my workshops or talk about, trying to navigate their careers and they're like either not on LinkedIn or their profile hasn't changed in five, 10 years. Yeah. I got on LinkedIn in like 2007, right yeah. after undergrad. I don't even know how I knew about it. Who knows? But I've been on it ever since. And it's been interesting to watch it evolve. But yeah, frankly, I don't feel like it has evolved that much. <laughs> I think that's the problem is it's people are like, and then of course, um, you know, it looks like Facebook. So then people are like, wait, is this a social network? Is it not a professional network? So I don't, there's a lot of, I don't know what they're doing at LinkedIn over there, but I, I do. we're actually having a LinkedIn recruiter on the podcast. So be able oh, to, good. don't worry. I'll ask her all the hard questions. Yeah. Ask her all the hard <laughs> questions, but, um, but it, I'm sure she'll tell you that she uses LinkedIn all the time. Oh, yeah. Like every recruiter. I mean, I always joke. I'm like, how did recruiters recruit before they have LinkedIn? Um, you know, they actually talk to people probably Ugh. all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Sounds terrible. Um, so that's always a really popular topic. And then, um, we call them like self-development, um, or like career development junkies, like people who are just, yeah, they, that's a, the next most popular topic on career contest they just really want to figure out how can I learn new skills? How can I improve my productivity? How can I, um, you know, think about emotional int intelligence and use it in the workplace more effectively? Like, sometimes it's just, they want lists of podcasts that are going to make them think in a different way and learn something new. So I always love that because I think it's so interesting that continual learning is such a female trait. Like I can't tell you how many of my friends are like, you know, they always are working on something, right? Like they always have this thing that they're interested, whether it's something at work or they're getting their yoga certificate, you know, like the yeah. point being, like, women just love learning. Uh, I think they love sort of the challenge of, of having this thing they're working on the gratification of like being able to say I did it. Um, so that's really fun because it keeps us on our toes. We're like, wow, like we just posted something the other day about 29 side hustles that actually work. And it was like, we were like, no, we're not going to list the ones that everybody lists. Like how can we get super creative with it? And those are hard, but they're really fun to research and, and find. What was the number one? Um, I don't, I mean, there were 29 of them, so I don't That's remember fair. the exact one, but also <laughs> we created a quiz where it was like, what type of side hustle do you need? So it was like, if you need a side hustle to make cash quickly, mm. then it would be like, okay, go do this thing where you just sign up and you can start making cash. Like they have these things where they'll, they'll pay you to take surveys online. Um, if you wanted to create a side hustle that you could like turn into leverage for a job, then it was like, all right, you, you need a side hustle. That's 
a little bit more um, practical or mm -hmm. makes you might have to give it a little bit more thought than just like anything that would make money. So I think that's interesting too, because people always assume that everyone starts a side hustle to turn it into a full-time hustle. And it's like, no, not necessarily. No. There's a lot of people who side hustle to leverage for a new job because oh, yeah. transitioning is like probably the other number one question I get is how do I transition careers? Same. Um, yeah. And it's, I think it's great that there are so many stories of people successfully transitioning. That doesn't mean it's easy. It just no. means, but it's awesome that so many people have done it. I mean, like 20 years ago, nobody was transitioning careers. You pick something. Not more than once. If yeah. anything. Yeah. So, um, that's super yeah, fast. Are, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm with you on that. I think that's incredibly interesting because the in-between point where they went from one thing to the next successfully, that in-between zone of transition is where I think it really shows actionable steps and their own personal mm -hmm. grit and motivation. And a yeah. lot of the people that we'll have on this podcast are people that have done that. Yeah. Cause I'm endlessly curious about yeah. how did you know how to go about it? And like, who gave you a chance? Yeah, totally. I mean, the background. I always tell people, I'm like, look, I'm pro living proof of that. I got a job in recruiting at Hulu as not being a recruiter. And later on, I found out that I was um, in final interviews against a girl who was a recruiter. They picked me because I was ridiculously passionate about it. Yeah. So when I told them about the informational interviews, I like knew everything you could possibly know about Hulu. And the other girl just didn't care nearly as much mm -hmm. as I did. And they were like, we knew that you were going to have a learning curve, but you were so excited about this. And that meant the world to us that you were so excited about recruiting and Hulu. So, I mean, that's amazing. That's yeah. very, that's smart of them too. And I think I wish a lot more companies yeah. hired based on opportunity and on potential rather than on specifically what people have done in the past. Yeah. Because there, I mean, I think the average person these days is multi-talented for and sure. multi-passionate. Yeah. And so to get stuck in one track just doesn't behoove anybody. It doesn't yeah. work out well for anybody because if people are constantly, not constantly, but if people are able to shift and pivot into new industries or new roles, you're getting a wealth of new knowledge. For sure. The, um, I think it was the CEO of Bonobos wrote an article on Medium. I'll have to find it and send it to you. And he actually talks about why he doesn't hire people who did the same job before. Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah. And he's like, why would I want someone who's making a lateral move? You know, someone who worked in, I don't know, Facebook marketing, uh, at a retail store or e-commerce store to come over and do Facebook marketing. They're just going to want to apply the same rules. When yeah. you get someone who, I don't know, worked in social media to now come over and do Facebook marketing for your company, they think the, the way they're going to think about it and apply, um, new ideas and whatever is tactics and strategies is going to be different because you bring a different point of view. So y'all yeah, have to find that and then you can put Please, it. Please. I would love to share that because that's, I, I know that there's a lot that we can do as individuals, as the employee mm -hmm. to make these changes happen in the workforce. Cause it's, it's an overall thing that's happening, right? It's a movement. Yeah. Things are without question changing. The way of work is different than it was five, yeah. 10, especially 20 years ago. It just takes time. It doesn't happen all at once. And yeah. so there's a lot that we can do to move it forward, but so much of it does have to come top down in a company's culture before mm -hmm. things are really going to start to be, you know, that way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So back to the job search, because I mm -hmm. think that's, well, at, it, at various points in our lives, we're all going to be there and it yeah. is a tough time and it is a hard journey to go from deciding that, okay, yes, I want to quit this job. It's no longer right for me or getting fired, which has happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then knowing what to even start looking for and where to look like, is monster still the place? You <laughs> like, do you so. still need a resume? <laughs> Should you just have yeah. a LinkedIn? Like, I guess walk me through some of your favorite bits of advice for the, the moment you decide to quit to the moment you get that job. Yeah. So let's just talk with like the materials, like the items you have to have to even launch a job search. One, I always think you need to have a list of target companies. I actually am an advocate for people to not actually apply for jobs, but apply to target companies or yes. you know, companies that are a good fit for you. So I always tell people come up with your list of 10 target companies. Um, you also need to have a resume. You need to have a LinkedIn. And sometimes you even need to have a cover letter. And I know a lot of people might disagree with this, that they're dead. They're not dead because when you come in for an interview, I'm going to want your resume. When I interview you on the phone, I'm going to want to use your resume. Um, but there, 
but the reason why LinkedIn is just as, as important, um, and some people might argue more important is because for example, I was talking to a recruiter the other day and I was like, I have this great candidate for you. Do you want me to send you her resume? She said, Nope, just send me her LinkedIn. What's nice about LinkedIn for recruiters, one, all the back end tools, um, the sourcing tools called LinkedIn recruiter. That makes it a little confusing, but there's some really great tools on that for us. And then also I can look at 15 LinkedIn profiles in about 10 seconds. I can look at 15 resumes in about 45 seconds. The point being is it's faster for me to go through LinkedIn because the mm -hmm. formatting is the same. I know exactly what to look for, where to look for it. Right. Um, also most people don't, give a shit about their LinkedIn. And that tells me a lot right off the back. You know, if you, if your resume says one thing and your LinkedIn says another, that's just sloppy and not detail oriented. So you definitely need to have those things. And I would say even potentially have a cover letter, um, ready to go because depending on the role, you know, that's going to matter. Um, when I was recruiting for the communications team at who, if you didn't have a cover letter or your cover letter wasn't great, you were done. They didn't. So what's the, what's the goal of a cover letter? The goal of the cover letter is to really tell your story of who you are, what you've done, and why you're interested in this role. But please make it interesting. Don't like regurgitate <laughs> what you've said everywhere else. Like this is where you get to point out the uniqueness of like why specifically Hulu or why specifically this company. Um, and I don't need to know, again, I don't need your resume regurgitated to me. I just want to know something like what makes you the perfect person for this role? I always love it when they start with really interesting introductions. I had this girl apply for a job once and she, um, she was like, she, she had been like traveling around the country doing this, um, like tour for a nonprofit. And so she started by telling me like how many miles, how many States, how many of this. And she's like, I did all that. And it's like, she made it into like some really funny song and she was like to get to you, you know? <laughs> and, um, and then she like explained that, you know, I'd been on this tour. We had traveled all these places and it was funny. It was like, she showed off her personality and her sense of humor. And, um, you know, Hulu was a place that liked that, you know, we weren't like all buttoned up and whatnot. So, um, yeah, try to make it, you know, fun and unique and, and, and be authentic to yourself. Try not, you know, or I'm not asking you to be someone you're not. Um, so target companies, get those items in place. And then the next thing based off of your target companies, I would always say, start having informational interviews or networking with people that work at those companies. One, you need to narrow down those 10 companies to probably about three or four that you actually want to like drill down and, and apply mm -hmm. for. Um, please, please, please don't do the thing where you spray and pray because spraying your resume everywhere and praying that someone will pick it up. The, the problem is that somebody might pick it up and now you're at a job where you don't really care and you're right. going to end up having to do this all over again. Best case scenario, you end up with a role there that you yeah. don't actually want. Yeah. That's a best case scenario. Worst case scenario is that you do this all day long and nobody ever gets back to you and your resume is in like some black hole in the internet. Um, but so once you start having those informational interviews and find people that you can talk to at those companies, no one said this is easy. No one said like, Oh, everybody that you reach out to at that company will get back to you right away. And they'll be so sweet about giving you their time. I'm not saying that, but you are going to have to work for it and you're going to have to, you want to work for it because you want to make sure that this is going to be a great company for you. Um, and from there you'll narrow it down to three or four and then you will just like, you know, swoop around and, and do your best to apply for a role there and figure out what department. And really what I think that's what's nice about that is it allows you to focus your job search more than you've probably ever focused a job search ever in your life. Um, it allows you to network with people who work at those companies. It allows you to know, like when you go into that company, you can say, I've had three informational interviews with employees. Um, I was really interested in this role. And because I'm making a career transition, I took this online class. I did this side project. Oh, and by the way, I had 14 informational interviews with people around Los Angeles that do this job because I thought it'd be interesting to hear what they, what they do, whatever it is. That's, that is going to blow. The That's so impressive sounding. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there are so many people that just don't want to do that. You know, they just want to apply for a job and get it. And you, I'm not saying that you, can't apply for a job and get it. What I'm commenting is that for the people who are making those career transitions or going out on a limb and doing something different, you're going to have to do something different as well. Um, for the people who want the job to come to them, make sure you have an amazing LinkedIn and make sure you are building and maintaining relationships uh, with people all around like that industry. So let's say you work in mobile marketing, you know, um, 
and you want to make sure that your LinkedIn is up to date, it has all the keywords that related to mobile marketing so that a recruiter might find you. Oh, and make sure that you are finding other people that work in mobile marketing around your city or wherever to meet and greet with them because referrals for companies, um, like employee referrals for jobs are like, Oh, like I'm just like, forget it. I won't go through any of those resumes. Just give me your friend's name. You know, right? I think people forget that it is equally as annoying to be on the hiring side. And they don't think about the fact that yes, they're applying to a ton of jobs, but a ton of people are applying to every one of those jobs. Honestly, I think the online application thing for recruiters was actually the terrible because I'm sure because it makes it, it so easy. It makes it so easy for all the wrong people mm-hmm. to quickly apply for a job. That's why I don't want to go through the resumes online. That's why I'm begging someone at the uh, company to have a friend who might be interested in this. This is why I'd rather go on LinkedIn and source. Um, what's interesting too is like I had a friend who's like amazing. Like she has all the right brands that she's worked for in the past, and she applied for a job on Hulu. And she's like, I haven't heard back and I'm really surprised. Do you think you could pass my resume along? This is a really good friend. She's actually an amazing fit for this. Um, So I passed it along and they had a phone call. That's what's crazy about it is like, she's such a good fit for the role that if they had gone through the resumes, they would have seen that. I bet that the role was so popular that they didn't have to go through the resumes online. So my only point being is like, even if you know that you're a great fit for the role, I'm sure there's people who are listening to this who are like, yeah, I've applied for jobs before where I'm like, I'm a great fit for it. They might not be looking at it. So it is actually, I would say if you apply online and you don't go any further, you have not actually finished applying for the job. Wow. Okay. So referrals, (laughs) so like getting out there and networking, Mm -hmm. which I know if you're listening, that probably gave you a pit in your stomach. So you're like, yeah. oh, I hate networking. People give networking I've, such a bad rap, but first of all, I hate networking too. What I do is I meet people one on one. I do not want to walk into an event. You're so much better at this than I am. But like, <laughs> I would never. I hate, hate, hate um, walking into like an event with a bunch of people, or even like a dinner party with a bunch of people. Like, I don't want to do that. So I always do it one on one. It's also not usually very efficient. Like one-on-one, you know that you're going to at least leave with more information than you came with. Yeah. Networking events, depending on what they are, can be a total and utter waste of time. Yeah. Um, Especially if you do live in LA and you have to drive there and park, which makes you in a bad mood the moment you get there. But (laughs) okay. So if you do hate networking events, but you still want to be able to grow your network, um, do you recommend just like stalking people on LinkedIn and reaching out or how, how's the, what's the best way to go about that? Yeah. I mean, that's certainly a good start. The other thing that you can do, obviously start with your, your network that you have. Like if your friends work at cool companies, see if you can talk to someone there. Also network within your own company. Um, Mm -hmm. one thing I was doing at Hulu before I left that I actually really enjoyed and I kind of miss it. Um, is being able, there were so many departments that I would like find someone like, well, first of all, we would like have an email exchange. So the cool thing about recruiting is you end up talking to everybody in the company because you have to recruit for them. So I would like kind of get to know people. And then I would take like an advertising person out for coffee and be like, I just wanted to learn more about your career path. Um, the graphic designer who made all the presentations, the tech guy, I I was always traveling with the tech guys. So I was lucky with that, but network within your own company or own organization. If your organization is too small, like you only have a five person team or whatnot, then um, find people who are working for companies that are similar to yours or maybe in roles that are similar to yours. Yes, you can find them on LinkedIn, add them as a connection, then get their email address and connect with them directly. Um, The key to networking is building, building and maintaining, like maintaining is the key there, but also um, getting, um, getting together with someone or reaching out to someone before you need something. Yes. I always say you got to make deposits to your like friendship bank before you need to withdraw. Yeah. Because then otherwise you just look like a taker. Yeah. And we all have that friend. That's a great connector, you know, like ask your friend, like, who do you know? Like, I I think what's interesting, if you don't put it out there, it's not going to come find you. Like you have to put this stuff out there. Everybody's thinking about themselves at all the time, like all (laughs) times. And it's not even in a self-centered way. That's just how you have to live your life. Yeah. Maybe you know, so don't assume, people are, <laughs> yeah. don't assume people are just thinking about how they can help you because chances are they're in their own heads and they're dealing with their own career. So help people help you. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, I mean, you got to let people know how they can go about helping you, who they can introduce you to, like what you're even after. One of the first things I always say, if you're looking for a job in a new industry, or if you're trying to switch roles, even in your same industry, shoot an email out, like individual emails out to like 10 of your people be like, Hey, Mm -hmm. so I'm starting to think about making this move. If you have any advice or anybody you think I should chat with, I'd love to help. Yeah. We actually have a template. Well, we have a a packet of te- email templates on Career Contessa, and there's an exact uh, template for that email. And oh my it's God, like, here amazing. are the things I'm interested in. Here are the things I'm looking for. Yeah. So I love know. templates. Templates are, you guys, if you don't want to think too hard, just I know. you can customize what you need to, but this whole process doesn't have to be as painful as it often is. You yeah. just need the resources, you know? Yeah. So. And- And look, our templates, whether you want to use them word for word or you want to use them as inspiration, how to start it, it doesn't matter. The point is, is like whatever we can do to, you know, give you that kick in the butt to to move forward. Um, For me, progress is so much more important than perfection. Perfection is like, you stop chasing that. It's never going to happen. So that's, you know, those those tools are absolutely going to help you with the progress part. Yeah. Okay. So say you're lucky enough, you get a job interview, any good advice for how to prepare for that first and potentially only interview? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think what a lot of people do before an interview is either they wing it, which is bad, or they think only about themselves. Mm. Like, what have I done? What are my answers? But I would encourage you to research the company. Who, who's the CEO? What's their product or service? We used to love asking people at Hulu what their favorite Hulu show was because oh, they smart. lied. We would, would know. know. Yeah. yeah. And if they didn't watch it, we were like, so you're applying for a job here and you've never even tested out our product. Um, so what are their products or service? How, you know, how do they make money? Um, key players. We talked about that. Any recent press. So if they, like if you were, if you had an interview at Disney, you better be talking about the fact that Disney just bought Fox, right? right. Like that's very newsworthy. Um, so it's good to ask, you know, know that kind of information. Um, I think understanding just, you know, their company culture, a lot of companies have fantastic career pages now. They also have pages on LinkedIn, um, following a company on LinkedIn or Instagram or wherever they are is not a bad idea because oftentimes they're posting any of their updates right there. So they make it even easier for you. Um, so that's all good stuff. Know about the company. The other thing I like to do is inter- or, uh, research your interviewers. So mm-hmm. if the recruiter doesn't tell you who you will be interviewing with, ask them. Go on LinkedIn, learn about their career path, you know, what they current, like what their actual job title is now, where they graduate from college. Um, you'd be shocked at how many people um, want to hire the person that reminds them the most of them. Oh my gosh, it's uh, I think so there's true. Like an official name. Yeah, there's like an actual name for that. I forget mirroring, what it's called. Right? But yeah. Is it so, mirroring? So- yeah, when you mirror somebody's like stance or their voice yeah. or their cadence, the way that they talk, like that yeah. makes people feel like they know you because you're acting like them. There's, mm-hmm. I feel like there's an office episode where Andy totally. first starts at the Scranton branch and he's like doing exactly as Michael Scott does. <laughs> and Michael Scott's like, he, but he hated it because yeah. I mean, Michael Scott's awful. Yeah. So it didn't work out in that scenario, but yeah, obviously you have to be, you know, subtle with it, but right. there's right. something you're to not- it. Your goal isn't to be like copying their every word, right. but also people are like, well, it doesn't, won't I seem like a stalker if I do that? I'm like, no, you'll seem like a person who did their research to be able to say like, Hey, I, I read about you before I came in. I saw that we both went to university of Oregon. That's awesome. Right. Like that's not, I mean, hopefully that didn't sound creepy. That's no, not creepy to me. that's also, that's good sales. It's good biz dev. It's good networking, yeah. like showing that you have interest in the person in front of you. Totally. A long way. Yeah, absolutely. So research who your interviewers are. And then next I would say, practice your pitch out loud. You know that they are absolutely going to say, so tell me about yourself. Like, who are you? Like, what have you been doing? You know? So if you know the question's coming, you can prepare an answer and practice it out loud because when you only read it, um, it's, it sounds different to say something out loud versus to write it out. And the way we talk is not the same way we write. And, um, so yeah, that's my other tip is like, be prepared with that one. Um, and then lastly, if you want to bring, um, you should always bring copies of your resume, but if you want to bring like an iPad or a tablet or even your phone to show off like some work that you've done, do that. I mean, I think that think of how helpful we're such a visual world, right? Like Instagram, Pinterest, we love visuals. 
bring visuals of any of the work that you've done that you can show off. I think that really helps aid tell your story. That's very smart. This is also helpful. Do you believe in sending a follow-up? Thank you. Always. Physical, digital, both. No physical. I, I like, it's look, a little I'm all for manners, but like, you just don't have to do that in, in a job interview, like for your wedding present. Yeah. Send the physical, mm-hmm. um, but digital works perfectly fine. Send a thank you note within 24 hours, send one to everybody you interview with. And we also have a template for that on career contest, but also, uh, mention something specific from the interview on um, And if you felt like you really missed the mark on an answer or something and in hindsight, you're like, I really want to elaborate or explain a little bit more about something. Now's your chance to do it in that um, email as well. And that thank you email. That's awesome. And one final question, because this one I feel like is the most uncomfortable part. When do you throw out how much, you know, you want to make, or if they just put you on the spot and they say, so what are your salary requirements? How do you deal with that? Well, they're always going to ask you that because they want to know what your range is so that they're not wasting your time or (laughs) their time. Um, So before you go in for that interview, you need to do your research. You need to understand what is the the range for this role? What do I want to make? So again, we have that on Career Contessa. You can find it out, but usually it's figuring out what are your, your, what are your costs? Like how much does it cost you to live um, every month? Double that and then add 20% right? Because women are traditionally paid 20% less than men. So we have to take into account the wage gap. So that's a good place just to start. Another thing you can do is Glassdoor has this amazing tool called Know Your Worth. Um, We have a salary database on Career Contessa. It's anonymously submitted by other women. It's called the Salary Project. You can go on there and check that out. Um, You want to get as much salary information or feedback as you can. Um, You might even want to, if you have somebody that you can ask, ask a man and a woman how much money they make in that role. Um, That's fantastic too. So there's a lot of great resources out there, but go in knowing your range. Um, mm-hmm. I like to give a range instead of an exact number. I just think it makes everyone a little bit more comfortable. Um, and then when they ask, you can give, you can say, yeah, I've done some research about this based off of my experience and yada, yada. You can come up with your, um, however it makes you comfortable to say it. Cause some people get really uncomfortable talking about money. Um, you can say I'm looking like for, most people get really uncomfortable. Most people, yeah. You can say I'm looking for something between the range of this and this. Um, And what that will do is the recruiter will either say, so that's really not within our range. Like this is what we were thinking, or they'll say, yep, that's great. And now you can confidently go for it. But yeah, I mean, like I said, the simple formula, add it all up, double it plus 20%. And and that's a good place to start as well. That's awesome. That's great advice. I haven't heard that kind of formula and it's super simple. Well, amazing. Lauren, this has been so helpful. I feel like if you're out there and you are in the middle of the job search process, hopefully you feel a little bit more confident and you now realize you have this plethora of resources to go yeah. check out. And then <laughs> tell us about the online course that you guys recently launched. Cause I think that's super helpful. Yeah. So we have a couple online courses where we're really trying to add more of them. It's something people were looking for because we have a career coaching platform and then we have the worksheets and templates. So this is a nice, uh, thing in the middle that people who want to take it a step further. So, um, we have the LinkedIn lab, So we will teach you exactly how to optimize your profile so that recruiters can find you. And the big um, secret there is all about keywords. What are they, how to find them, how to add them. Um, So we've got the LinkedIn lab. We have the 24 hour resume makeover, which comes with over four resume templates that we created. And what's really interesting about all of our online courses, they're not boring. They're two hours or less. I think they're actually like an hour and a half or something like that. Um, they come with worksheets, um, templates, everything you need. So really there's no excuse not to have this stuff. Um, <laughs> then we have, um, the job search strategy and next will be how to ace the interview. So we're, we've got the good on all the job search stuff. So you've got start to finish. So there's no excuse. You guys, if you're trying to make this happen for yourself, which is the only way to do anything, mm-hmm. then there's no excuse. Get out there, go check it out. We'll make sure to link to everything in the show notes. Lauren, this was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Everybody got a lot out of today. I, I definitely did, and I'm in no place to go searching. For that, <laughs> it kind of makes you want to, right? <laughs> I, I feel like I kind of want to try it out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thanks well, so much. Thank you. <laughs>